Leading a team is no easy task. You need to know how to deal with different personalities and ensure their cooperation and dedication to achieve your goals. You would be lucky if your team gets along nicely, but it would surely be a headache if everyone in the group had very strong personalities who are difficult to tame. If that's your problem, then this book can give you the solutions you need. This book is a fictional story about a CEO who struggles to lead the company due to various issues within the team. By acknowledging the existing dysfunctions within the team and thinking of ways to address them, they successfully resolved their issues and led the company to success. Here are the top seven lessons from the book The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Lesson one, acknowledge the dysfunctions. No team is perfect. There will always be weaknesses and disagreements now and then. But although this is an expected occurrence within groups, it does not mean that we will just accept these flaws. These issues, if left unresolved, will eventually backfire on the entire organization. To resolve these dysfunctions, we need to acknowledge that they exist. Sometimes our strengths and capabilities may blind us from recognizing issues we need to fix, and accepting that there are things we need to work on as a team is the first bold step we need to take. Lesson 2. Build Trust One of the dysfunctions in a team is a lack of trust among the members. In Lencioni's model, a lack of trust lies at the bottom of the pyramid, suggesting that this issue has a domino effect on other problems. When everyone in the team trusts each other, they'll be more open and willing to share their thoughts and concerns. They will not hesitate to show their weaknesses and vulnerabilities because they know that they will receive solutions rather than judgments from the rest. Trust is the foundation of successful teamwork, so this should be the first thing we need to build. Lesson 3. Welcome Conflict Another team dysfunction is the avoidance of conflicts. An open and trusting team is not immune to disagreements and misunderstandings. We want to have a harmonious working relationship, that some people hesitate to express their opinions or point out weaknesses, thinking this might disrupt the team's harmony. So if this harmony hinders everyone from being open about what they genuinely believe and feel, then it's just a false harmony. A team built on trust is more open to discussions, even if it means clashing of ideas. Once trust is there, opinions are openly expressed, and differences are ironed out in the end, leading to genuine harmony within the group. Lesson 4. Secure their commitment The third dysfunction is a lack of commitment. When coming up with a group decision, we need to secure everyone's commitment to the plan. However, if team members cannot express their thoughts and participate fully in the discussion, it may be difficult for them to get on board with the decision. They may think that they were not heard and that their opinion could have helped craft better decisions. With these thoughts in mind, they may not wholeheartedly buy the decision, thus making it difficult to commit to it fully. Lesson 5. Make them accountable Another dysfunction Lencioni talked about is the avoidance of accountability. If team members feel that they could not participate in the discussion, they may not fully commit to the decision, and consequently, they may not feel accountable for the consequences. Why should they be blamed for something they did not agree on in the first place, right? But this is where problems come in. For a team to succeed, everyone should work towards the same vision and stay united regardless of the consequences. Thus, it is crucial that at the very beginning, everyone is committed to the collective decision and goals so that they can also be accountable for the tasks assigned to them. Lesson 6. Focus on collective results The fifth dysfunction identified by Lencioni is inattention to results. If team members are not committed to group goals and decisions, they will not feel accountable for the tasks and may not focus on results. This implies that instead of prioritizing group goals, they may work towards personal goals and aims, thereby losing sight of their vision. In a successful team, members recognize that group goals are more important than personal gains. If the group goals are clearly defined and measurable, it makes it easier for team members to commit to achieving the goals. Moreover, when team members do not focus on results, they're more likely to perform poorly and fail to deliver excellent outputs. Lesson 7. Address the dysfunctions After recognizing the dysfunctions, the next thing to do is address them. Now, this is where outstanding leadership comes in. The leader should be an example in recognizing the issues within the group and should model an attitude of openness in addressing the problems. For instance, the leader should encourage building trust among the members and create an environment that's not harshly judgmental, nor critical to flaws and imperfections. When conflicts arise, the leader should show effective strategies to manage and resolve misunderstandings instead of avoiding them. The leader is also expected to step up in ensuring the commitment and accountability of all members. Most importantly, it is the leader who shall steer the team towards the achievement of group goals. In conclusion, this book suggests that it's natural for teams to experience issues and be confronted with flaws and weaknesses. However, instead of simply accepting this reality, this needs to be addressed for the team to succeed. As the book points out, one dysfunction can lead to another dysfunction, eventually paralyzing the entire team. Thus, the key to having a successful team is recognizing and addressing these dysfunctions, based on fundamental principles guiding group interactions. 
We do not necessarily need special skills or expertise to know the importance of trust, openness, accountability, collective effort, and an effective leader in making the team realize its vision. Thank you for listening. If you like the book summary and you want to see more in this category, please like and subscribe so I can create more. You can also get a free copy of the entire audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time.